Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Well, today is November 24th, 2021. Didn't think I'd live this long, but uh, I did. And... Uh, Thanksgiving is tomorrow, and here's the deal. The anti-white media, the kosher anti-white media, says, oh, white people are horrible. They went all over the world and subjugated all the people of color all over the world. Well, you know what? Hmm. Was that a prophecy in Scripture? Hey, let's take a look. Let's go to Genesis chapter 28. You know what really makes me sick? Is churchgoers that refuse to read the Bible. I mean, I've met people that like, Oh, well, I won't read the Old Testament. That's for the Jews. That doesn't belong to us. I'm a New Testament Christian. Really? So when you build a house, you don't put down a foundation and no walls. You just throw the roof up? Really? You know, the Old Testament is the foundation. And if you don't have a foundation, uh... When the storm comes, the roof will collapse. Truth of the matter is, the Jews' holy book is called the Babylonian Talmud. T-A-L-M-U-D. Talmud means learning. So, the Babylonian learning, or learning from Babylon, that is their holy book. And their unholy book is called the Kabbalah, K-A-B-B-A-L-A-H. There's a number of different ways they spell it, sometimes with a C, sometimes with a Q. But look up Kabbalah, the soul of Judaism. Spend an hour reading it. It has nothing to do with the Bible. Nothing. Don't take my word for it. Do your own research. You know, you'd be surprised who owns the media. Do you know that the printer of the New International Version, the NIV Bible, is the same parent publisher that prints the Satanic Bible of the Church of Satan? They print gay porn, the joy of gay sex, with, Ill well, with, with pictures. Hey! So if you want to learn how to the joy of gay sex by Mr. Silverman, uh, yeah, sounds pretty kosher to me, uh, go for it. Or, you know, do you, you know, the NIV was the top selling Bible for at least one year. And Harry Potter, uh, if you don't know what that is, it was a story of a wizard, a saucer. A male witch outsold the Bible one year, at least. This is where America is. So, you know, can you uh, turn off your TV for 30 minutes, one television program a day, and read your Bible? If not, yeah, you might be deceived, you know. And you trust, you know, TV is filth, and you watch preachers that are on TV? Let me tell you a little story here. There's a government agency, you know, the government, you know, the people that made gay weddings legal, yeah, and uh, abortion legal, yeah, yeah, those people. Uh, they are, there's a government agency called the FCC, Federal Communications Commission. You cannot have a television station or a radio station without permission from the government, you know, you know, the people, abortions and gay weddings. Yeah, those people. 
And you're going to tell me that TBN, 700 Club, Billy Goat Graham, all these people on television, you you honestly think that they're enemies with the uh, the the gay wedding people and the um, you know <laughs> the abortion people, really? And what is television all about? Uh, vampires, uh, fornication, witchcraft, uh, you name it. You know, look at even the old westerns. You know, everybody's like, oh yeah, well those were fairly wholesome. Every time I turn on a, a, a television to check the weather or something, and there's a western on, they're in the bar. They're in the saloon, drinking. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you can't turn off your TV for 30 minutes a day and watch, instead of watching a TV show, read your Bible. The Bible starts in Genesis, people. Yeah, you know, Genesis. Yeah, yeah. God made a covenant with a guy named Abraham and his son Isaac and then his son Jacob and then his 12 sons, Israel. You know, come on, people. You know? And I, you know, people say, "Oh, well, you're you're in some kind of cult. You teach all kinds of weird stuff." No, I don't. No, I don't. I, I'm teaching the stuff they taught a hundred years ago, before Billy Goat Graham destroyed everything. You know, before World War One. That's the kind of stuff I teach. Do you know after World War One? They created the League of Nations, a one-world government they tried. But all the Christians in the United States said, hey, wait a minute, I've read the book of Revelation. Uh, one-world government's not a good thing. I, we're not going to be a part of it. The Christians said this. They, there were so many of them, they wouldn't be involved. All right, let's take a look at uh, Genesis 28. You know, verse 1. And Isaac called Jacob. And Jacob's name was changed of the Lord to Israel. You know, prince of God, rules with God. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him, gave him a command, and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. You know, the Canaanites. You know, when, when God brought Israel out of Egypt and took him into the land of Canaan, he, he told him to go in and kill everything that breathed. Yeah. Why is that, Chaplain Bob? Well, if you'd bother to read Genesis 6, uh, and where it tells you the sons of God, and if you don't know who the sons of God were in Genesis 6, you know, the giants, uh, go to Job 38, and it tells you the sons of God shouted at the foundation of the earth. So the sons of God were there when the earth was created. Do you know Adam didn't come until six days after? Yeah. Six days later, Adam came. So it's impossible for the sons of God to be, plural, sons of God, to be mere men. Now, Adam is a son of God. Jesus is called the only begotten Son of God, if you use a King James Bible. If you use an NIV, Jesus is just another Son of God. He's just one of many. Nothing special. Matter of fact, uh, in the NIV, uh, Jesus is the morning star of Revelation 22. And then if you go to Isaiah 14, the guy that fell from heaven... You know, that's going to the pit of hell. Uh, he's the morning star, too. Do you know there's people that tell you that Jesus is Lucifer? Yeah. Yeah, Lucifer. Yeah, the guy in Isaiah 14 in the King James that fell from heaven, that tried to take over God's throne. Yeah, that guy. Uh, if, if you want to use Lucifer, get a King James. Take your NIV that's printed by the the same people that print gay porn and the satanic Bible and throw it in the garbage where it belongs. Better yet, burn it. That's that's what we're supposed to do. Burn it. That's what uh, 
in the book of Acts, when everybody had their mystical art books, their magic books, they burned them. Uh, you know, I mean, really, people, you know, there's people will tell you, oh, no, 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 the sons of God, they're, they were godly men. And then the, the, the daughters of men, they were those ungodly women. So all the men were godly, all the women were ungodly. So you had believing men, unbelieving women, they got married, and then they had giants for children. Yeah, you know, like Goliath, and then God sends a flood and drowns them all. Didn't send evangelists. No, 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 no. He just sends a flood and, you know, baptizes the earth and, and drowns them all. Yeah, you know, King David was wrong. Instead of killing Goliath, he should have told him, Jesus loves you. He wants you to get me saved, Goliath. Uh, no, no. That's the nonsense you hear from the Billy Goat Grams. Look, people, it's real simple. When believers and unbelievers get married, they don't have giants that are 9 to 12 foot tall with six fingers and six toes. Six fingers and six toes. What are you talking about, Chaplain Bob? Uh, so you've never read the Bible? You've never read the Old Testament? You never read the book of Joshua? Really? Well, maybe you need to turn your TV off. Better yet, throw it in the garbage. Matter of fact, you'd never even know that there was a, there, a, a, a COVID plague killing all these millions of people if you didn't have a television. I don't know anybody that's died of any disease. I, I just know what, you know, the television keeps trying to spew. I don't know anybody. And I don't know anybody that knows anybody. I always, I've been, I was asking people, do you know anybody that's died from this disease? And they're, no, I sure don't. There'd be people dropping dead in the streets, cars crashing. Uh, you know, the hospitals would be full. Parking lots would be packed. You know, Genesis 28, verse 1. No, I'm not teaching weird stuff. I'm teaching the stuff they taught 100 years ago. I had an 1890s theology book that I bought from a used bookstore. And it, it teaches the same thing, same type of things that I'm, I believe. It's nothing new. But if you want to believe that uh, believing men married believing women and had giants for children with six fingers and six toes, hey, that's up to you. Or you could believe the sons of God in Genesis 6 were angels. And that's why God destroyed the flood. And that's why after the flood, the same thing happened. And they were the Canaanites. That's why God said, go into the land and kill all all the Canaanites. Don't marry them. Don't make friends with them. Don't worship their gods. Kill them. Yeah, God really said to do that. And, and if you think believing men married unbelieving women, and then God said to kill all their children, well, you know, that's why people say, oh, God's a homicidal maniac. Well, if their idea is true, uh, you know, is God a homicidal maniac? Well, if believing men have, with unbelieving women, have giants with six fingers and six toes for children, uh, you know, come on, people, get real. And, and if everything I'm saying to you is, is crazy sounding, well, that's because you've never read the Bible. You've never studied it. Read James chapter 1. It says, if any of you lack understanding, let him ask of God. Get on your hands and knees. Ask the Lord for understanding. And then go to get a King James Bible. Go to Genesis chapter 1. And start reading. 30 minutes every day. Turn off your TV for one television program. Give me a break. Genesis 28 verse 1. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Don't marry the Canaanites. Don't do it. Sounds racist. Ooh, God's a racist. No, Isaac was a racist. A racist. 
Yeah. Uh, where do we hear that word? Oh, that's in, uh, let's see, that's in the book of um, uh, the Bible, where? Uh, nowhere. No, that's television. That's your kosher television. Verse 2. So Isaac tells Jacob, Arise, go to Padanaram, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. Do you know what the word Laban means? White. Yeah. Oh, that's racist. You ever wonder why the, 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 the kosher television is so anti-white lately? Look at the commercials. There's no more white males anymore. If there's a white female, she's got a black man. And they're a happy couple with their little mixed children. But God said, don't, don't marry the Canaanites, right? And I'm not saying the blacks are Canaanites. I don't know that for a fact. Although I might suspect at times the way they act, sometimes. I mean, not all of them, but, you know. Verse 3, so go marry a, you know, a daughter of Laban, white. Verse 3, and God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee, that thou mayest be a multitude of people. Are the Jews a multitude of people? Uh, there's like 12 to 15 million Jews in the world. Are they, is that a multitude of people? Really? Verse 4. And give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed, thy children, with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land, inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger, which God gave unto Abraham. And Isaac sent away Jacob, and he went to Padanaram unto Laban, son of Bethuel, the Syrian, the Syrian. Hmm. You wonder why the Antichrist over in the Middle East attacks Syria? Uh, what do you mean, Antichrist, Bob? Chaplain Bob? Oh, you don't know what an Antichrist is. Oh, I forget. You're the one watching... Um, yeah, Billy Goat Graham. Billy Goat Graham will no, never tell you what an Antichrist is. Well, unless he's talking about Rome... 1 John 2.22, who is a liar? Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. Is there people or a group of people who deny that Jesus is the Christ or the Messiah? Uh, yeah. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Uh, so who denies Jesus, the Son, who was sent to the Father? Well, if you don't know who that is, uh, call your local synagogue and ask if Jesus is the Messiah or the Christ. And, well, you should already know the answer to that because guess what? If they acknowledge Jesus as the Christ or the Messiah, wouldn't they be Christians? Of course they would, but they're not because they deny, which makes them antichrists. So... There you go. Real simple, right? All right, so. And who's over in Syria? Uh, killing the Syrians and stealing their oil. I'll give you three guesses. And uh, the first two don't even count. Yeah, it's, it's a country over in the Middle East of Antichrist. Verse 5, And Isaac sent away Jacob, and he went to Padanaram unto Laban, son of Bethuel, the Syrian, the brother of Rebekah, Jacob, and Esau's mother. When Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Padanaram to take him away from thence, 
and that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge saying, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Don't marry them. They're satanic human hybrids. Don't do it. And that Jacob obeyed his father and his mother and was gone to Padanaram. And Esau, seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not Isaac his father. See, Esau married two women of the tribes of Canaan. They were uh, Hittites. And by the way, uh, if you look in archaeology, uh, the Hittite temple, you know, they, uh, I think it's The Bible is History by Vernon Keller. They used to laugh and say, oh, the Hittites, that's just a Bible fairy tale. They don't exist. They never existed. Well, they were digging around out in the desert, and guess what they found? A temple of the Hittite Empire. And then they... Uh, deciphered the language on the wall and uh, figured out, hey, these are the Hittites. Well, guess what? When the images on the wall, the, the drawings on the wall, when they looked at them, depicting the Hittites, they had large noses. You know, the nose nose? Yeah. I wonder if that's a coincidence, a Cohen coincidence a coincidence yeah so Esau and by the way if you read Obadiah chapter 1 God said he hated Esau why well one of the reasons was he married the Canaanites the Hittites so verse 8 and Esau seeing that the daughters of Canaan please not Isaac his father then went Esau unto Ishmael and took unto the wives which he had uh, Mah Mahaloth, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the daughter, the, I'm sorry, the sister of Nebajoth to be his wife. Yeah, I know, I'm probably slaughtering some of those names, but, you know. Uh, I didn't take Hebrew in uh, Bible college, sorry. And Jacob went out from Beersheba, I wonder if that was Budweiser, right? And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed to behold a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed, his children. Listen to this. Really careful. Verse 14. Carefully listen. And thy seed, children, shall be as the dust of the earth. Uh, are the Jews like the dust of the earth? I, in Numbers, I mean, God told Abraham, look at the stars. And if you can count the stars, that's what your seed will be like. Well, if you live in a city, that, do, that doesn't mean much. But you go out in the middle of the desert where there's no cities for 50 miles, guess what? Stars, there's, there's parts of the sky that looks like milk because there's so many stars out there. You can't even count them all. God told Abraham, his, his seed would be like the seed of the, the sand, the, the sand of the seashore. Millions of inhabitants. Does that sound like the Jews? No. No. Sure doesn't. Verse 14. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. Israel was to be a colonizing people. That's one of the big points of this study. Israel, Jacob, Israel was to be a colonizing people. They're going to spread abroad to the west, 
to the east, to the north, and to the south. Keep that in mind. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Uh, have the Jews blessed all the families of the earth? Uh, if they have, I don't know what it is. Maybe God's hiding that from me. I don't know. What has... Well, if Israel's white people, how has white people blessed all the families of the earth? Uh, teaching people agriculture. White people are... White civilization is the number one for agriculture. We created civilization. Buildings. Skyscrapers in New York City. There's no skyscrapers built by the blacks in Africa. Zero. I don't even think there's a two-story building that the blacks have ever built. They don't exist. You know? Uh, water treatment plants and plumbing. Do you think they have running water in Africa in these villages? No, they got to go down to the mud hole. Sewage systems. You know, you know how much disease was wiped out in the West when when they created uh, sewage systems. I mean, really, people have no idea. Cholera is almost unheard of as a disease in the Western nations. We built civilizations and we went to the north, to the south, the east, and the west. The pilgrims and the Puritans came to America. We were colonizing people. South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, and we built civilizations. And what did we do to the heathens? You know, the kosher media will say, oh, those horrible white racists came to America and they killed all the native Indians. Let me tell you about the native Indians. They were cannibals. They practiced human sacrifice. Same thing with the Aztecs. You know what the Aztecs were their capital it was built uh, the ruins of their capital was where they built Mexico City the Aztecs are the modern-day descendants of the Mexicans yeah they also did human sacrifice and cannibalism as also did the Indians you ever heard you know the Canaan the land of Canaan where Israel was told to go in and kill everything and if you don't know what I'm talking about, read the book of Numbers, read the book of Joshua. The word cannibal, cannibal, comes from the word Canaan and Baal, B-A-A-L. It's a contraction, cannibal, Canaan, Baal. And um, the Canaanites did human sacrifice and cannibalism. And Baal was just a generic name for Lord that became so associated with Satanism that uh, the Bi actually the, uh, the God of the Bible said, don't call me at that anymore. So uh, let me prove that to you. All right, in Isaiah, I'm sorry, Hosea. Hosea, the minor prophet Hosea, 2 and verse 16. And in that day, uh, and it shall be at that day, saith the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishai, and shalt call me no more Baalai. So they didn't like the word, he didn't like the word Baal, Baal, B-A-A-L, because it had been so associated with Satanism, and it's just a generic word that means Lord. He said, don't call me that anymore. You know, really. So, and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. 
which is exactly what white people did. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And when the white Christian Canaanite, or uh, Puritans and pilgrims came here, they found people that did the practices of the Canaanites. Human sacrifices, cannibalism. And let me tell you something, when those white Christians saw that they were living a bunch among a bunch of cannibals, and they preached to them, and they saw that the gospel had nothing, would not take root in their hearts. Well, they knew what to do. They did what the Lord said to do to the Canaanites back in the Old Testament. They grabbed their rifles and they got rid of the Canaanites because they didn't want their children to become dinner. And today, people are hurt. Oh, he called me the wrong uh, uh, the wrong pronoun. I mean, really? Back when men were men. You know, when you see pe uh, a bunch of heathen heathens that they call engines practicing human sacrifice and cannibalism, they tried preaching to them and they saw it was a waste of time. They were not part of the covenant. They grabbed their rifles and they took care of business. Especially when one of your children disappears. And the Indians are having a feast. Yeah. Personally, I'm glad they got rid of most of them. They're satanic heathens. Just like the Canaanites of old. But if you listen to the Mormon church, oh, they're, they're, they were, the Indians were God's chosen people. Uh, chosen for annihilation, maybe. But your kosher media will say, oh, well, those white people were horrible. They came to the United States, this land, and they killed those poor Indians. You know what? There was a book called The Light and the Glory. It covered the history of the early settlers to America. And I don't remember what's where they settled or if they were the pilgrims or puritans but they were uh, in an area and winter was coming and they were having troubles with one of the tribes i mean the tribes were they didn't want to they didn't want anything to do with the whites they were trying to kill them off well one day they uh noticed that the uh, they weren't getting attacked anymore and they'd been trying to make peace with the Indians but it wasn't working so they decided to send some uh, spies or a delegation to you know check on them to try to work something out with them well when they got to their village they were all lying around dead all of them every single one of these heathen engines that were trying to kill the whites was dead. The whole village had been wiped out. Well, guess what? It was harvest time. All the corn was grown. The squash was ready to go. The beans were ready to pick. Everything was ready. They go back to the the to the uh, colonies, the colony, and said, "Hey, the Indians are all dead, and the harvest is ready." So everybody went there and they harvested all the food that the Indians had planted. All the effort that they had put was given into the hands of the Christians. God made a way. God killed the heathen savages. And of course, the kosher media will say, oh, they probably poisoned them with smallpox. I mean, really, did, did did we have that kind of knowledge, you know, 300 years ago? Did we? Did we have that kind of knowledge? I, I don't know. I don't think so. I, personally, I see God's hand in it. The people that glorified Jesus Christ, the Son of God, 
made it through the winter and honored the Lord. And the heathen Indians, the cannibals that did human sacrifice, God's hand was against them. My opinion. But the kosher media will say, oh, those terrible white people, they came here and killed those poor, peaceful, loving Indians. Uh, people, where are the Canaanites? You know, God, God's people didn't, did not do what God said to do to kill all the Canaanites. They didn't do it. They married into them, a lot of them. Read Ezra chapter 9. Read it. When they came back, when Judah came back from Babylon, they found they had married into the heathens. They, God said to divorce them. Well, the, the priest of God said, divorce them. Separate yourselves from these heathen children. But Chaplain Bob, God says he hates divorce. Well, take it up with God. Take it up with God. Don't take it up with me. I'm just telling you what I read in the Bible. And Israel, read Galatians 3.29 of who Israel is. The Bible says, and if ye be Christ, then are ye. Not become, not spiritual seed. This is, and if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Genesis 28, 14, And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awakened out of his sleep and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. You know what, people? God was with, when we had Jesus Christ as our king, and we carried the Bible, Christ was with our people. We conquered nations and subdued the heathens. And now, look at us. We are actually a minority in our own countries, or quickly becoming, and there's an active hatred. Ooh, white supremacy, white privilege. Yeah. There's an active hate white people. Remember the uh, the black that hit all the people in that Christmas parade up in, uh, I think it was Wisconsin? You know, he had just gotten out of jail for running over the mother of his kid with a car. $1,000 bail? Really? Runs over his own mother of his own children with a car? He's got a, he's been arrested a bunch of times. You should listen to his rapping where he's talking about uh, killing white people. Yeah, they're, they're scrubbing all his social media because they don't want you to know, but there's people that have copied some of his stuff. You think that's a, an isolated thing? No, it's not. Khalid Muhammad, K-H-A-L-I-D, M-U-H-A-M-M-E-D. He was head of the Nation of Islam before Farrakhan. He was also head of the Black Panthers. I got a video if you're interested. Two or three minutes. He says, kill them all. They're just little blue-eyed little babies. God damn it, I say, kill them all. Yeah, his words, not mine. Yeah. That's, that's, he's a black Muslim, so-called. Kill them all. They're just little blue-eyed little babies. Kill them all. Yeah, real, you know, Jesus taught love and they teach, teach kill all the whites. You know, I think 
what we ought to do, well, if I was in charge, you commit a crime against a white and you're black, you're, I'd drop your ass off in Africa. And I'm talking about their donkeys, by the way. Them and the donkey they rode in on. Yeah, their ass, yeah. But uh, I would drop them off in Africa. There you go. Uh, you're back in your homeland. Enjoy. First day, they'd be crying. Oh, I want to come back to America and have running water. Clean running water. And, and you know. You know, you go live in an Amish community. You're not going to get robbed, beaten, raped. You know. Think about it. You take a look at the cities with the highest crime rates. Coincidentally, they have large populations of dark-skinned people. But if you point that out, that's racist. You know, God's people were to live alone, away from the heathen. And I know people say, well, Jesus came for everybody. Anybody can be saved. Well, you know what? They tried with the Indians. Didn't work. I could name quite a few uh, preachers that tried with the Indians. Didn't work. Didn't work. And when they caught them cannibalizing people, they 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 act, acted like men. You know, and Luke, I think it's Luke 22, when Jesus was in the garden, he told his disciples to buy a sword. Not to go around murdering people, no. To protect the family. People, it's getting to be a dangerous word. In 1964, the so-called Supreme Court said that uh, no more Bible reading in public schools. I'm the last generation, absolutely the last generation, that had prayer in Jesus' name in a government school. Yeah, they took it out. I mean, it had been in government schools for, you know, a couple hundred years from the beginning. Did you know that Harvard was a Bible college? Did you know that Yale was a Bible college? Really? They were. I think all your uh, Ivy Leagues, I'm not sure about Princeton, but uh, uh, virtually all your Ivy League so-called colleges were Bible colleges. What do you think Harvard taught from? The Bible. Harvard Law School used the Bible. Yeah. That was where the law came from. The Bible is a law book, believe it or not. It is. Uh, but, you know, you know why they hate white people? It's real simple. Because Jesus, well, let's take a look. Is there a place in the Bible where it talks about what Jesus looks like? Uh, yeah, there is. Turn your Bible to Revelation chapter 1. Verse 14, now John was beholding Jesus, and he went to look at him. And if you don't believe it, go to Revelation 1, 1, read the whole thing, and then when you get to verse 14, you will know that John was talking about Christ. And this is what he saw. He's describing what Christ is looking at, uh, looks like when he's looking at him. Revelation 1.14, his head, his head and his hairs, head and hairs, were white like wool, white like wool, not wooly, like the black so-called Hebrews say, he, he, yeah, it'd be wooly, wooly, no, it says his hairs, his head, head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. Well, I've never really seen black snow, but uh, maybe the pollution up in New York City gets really bad. I don't know. So his head and his hairs were as white as wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. 
I used to think, oh, red eyes, like an albino. Nah. Somebody pointed something out to me. You ever looked at a gas stove, turned it on? What color is the flame? Blue. Yeah. Verse 15. And his feet like undefined brass. Uh, now, brass is made of copper, which is a reddish golden bra uh, brown color, not black. Uh, and his feet like undefined brass, as if burned in a furnace, and his voice is the sound of many waters. How about the Song of Solomon? Uh, you know, Solomon, the son of David, uh, you know, who was a uh, allegedly, you know, Christ was of, of David and Solomon was of David. Song of Solomon 510. My beloved is white, white. What does Laban mean? It meant white. My beloved is white and ruddy. What does ruddy mean? It means ruddy, uh, reddish. My beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefest among 10,000. Bible Book of Lamentations 4 and verse 7. Her Nazarites, uh, remember, uh, uh, Samson was a Nazar uh, Nazarene, took a you know pledge. Uh, where was Jesus from? Nazareth, right? Jesus of Nazareth. Her Nazarites were pure, purer than snow. They were whiter than milk. And no, it wasn't chocolate milk. They were whiter than milk. They were more ruddy in body than rubies. What color is rubies? Red. Their polishing was of sapphire. Do you know the word Adam in the Hebrew? Uh, in the Strong's Concordance means word 119 and 120. Uh, to show blood in the face. Adam means to show blood in the face. To be able to blush. To flush. To turn red. Rosy. Ruddy. Hmm. What did, what did David look like? 1 Samuel 17, 42. And when the Philistine looked about, we're talking about Goliath, and when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy, reddish, you know, Irish or ruddy, and of a fair countenance. What does countenance mean? Complexion. It's just a fancy word, you know, King's English fancy word for complexion of a fair countenance. Uh, Snow White, you know, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Black is not a fair complexion. Brown is not a fair complexion. Engines were not a fair complexion. Think about it. And I want you to think about it. Who printed all the Bibles and built all the churches? Africa? No. Asia? No. Europe and the USA did. Think about it. Think about it. You know, listen to this. In Ezra 9 and verse 2, the Bible spoke of their hatred of interracial type marriages. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the holy seed, holy seed, have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers have been chief in this trespass. Holy seed. If there's a holy seed, there has to be an unholy seed. Huh. Doesn't that make sense? But Chaplain Bob, that's some weird stuff. Let me tell you something, people. Do you know in the 1950s, when the country was majority white, do you know that many states had laws against interracial marriages? That's why the marriage license, so that the state could examine and say, hey, wait a minute, he's black, you're white. No, you can't do that. Was that racist? Uh, was sodomy against the law back then? Were sodomites allowed to get married? No. Was abortion legal back then? 
No. Did churches teach against sin back then? Generally, until you started getting Billy Goat Grams. What do the churches teach today as sin? Uh, racism, white supremacy, you know, really, think about it. Things have changed, people, and not for the better. Absolutely not for the better. But, uh, you know, it makes a big difference. If, if whites are Israel, and I think they are, well, if, if Christians are the lost tribes of Israel, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's because you've never read your Bible. The northern tribes of Israel were taken into captivity by the Assyrians, and they never returned to the land. In the book of Hosea, God said, divorced, well, in Jeremiah 3.8, God said he divorced Israel. But in Jeremiah 31.31, 31, he said he would give them a new covenant. What do you think the New Testament is? It's a new covenant. And then in the book of Hosea, H-O-S-E-A, you know, one of those Old Testament minor prophets, he said that you are not my people. Why? Because of the sin. But he says, and in the place where it was said, ye are not my people, you would be the children of the living God. Maybe we should read that, huh? May as well make this an hour study, you know? Now, people, if you got racial pride because you're white and you're going to march around with a swastika and Mein Kampf with a picture of Hitler, uh, you miss the point. Totally missed the point. If Hitler was a Christian, uh, I can find no evidence for it. You know, I know people will say, oh, Hitler said this and that and the other. Uh, Jesus said, by their fruits, ye shall know them. I didn't see any fruit. Sorry. But, hey, if Hitler is your Messiah, go for it. He's not mine. All right, let's take a look at Jeremiah 3.8. Uh, God was angry with Israel. Now, you got to realize something. Israel and Judah split, just like the American Civil War. You had the North and the South. Israel had the North and the South, too. They had different kings. You ever heard of King Ahab? King Ahab was not king of Judah. He was king of Israel. And God was not happy with them. Uh, they had different kings, different capitals. Judah's capital was Jerusalem. Israel's capital was Samaria. You know? And they're different. Jeremiah 3.8 And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, spiritual adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. When's the last time you heard Billy Goat Graham tell you that God divorced Israel? Never. Oh, God's got an everlasting covenant with the Jews, which are Israel. Uh, really? Show, show them this. God divorced Israel. A bill of divorce. Put her away. You'll never hear this taught in a church. Yeah. See, I teach all the stuff that they don't want to touch because it destroys their lies. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. God divorced Israel, but not Judah. Why? Because God made a promise to King David that he would uh, always have a man to sit upon the throne of David. Yeah, that's the reason why. 
And yet, in the place where the Lord said he divorced Israel, listen to this, Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. See, they're not the same. God says the house of Israel and the house of Judah. New covenant, not a renewed covenant like the Hebrew roots deceivers tell you. No, 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 no. No, that they're, they're telling you God's giving you a second chance to keep the law. No. No, faith in Christ. That was the new covenant, not keep the Sabbath. Christ didn't say anything about keeping the Sabbath. No. Hebrew roots heretics. They don't even like the name Jesus. Yeshua. Well, my Greek New Testament doesn't say Yeshua anywhere. My Old Testament says Yeshua, well, Joshua, but it doesn't say Yeshua. So, my Bible says Jesus. Devils have been cast out of people in the name of Jesus. I don't know any devils have been cast out in the name of Yeshua, but I don't know. All right, let's take a look at Hosea chapter 1 real quick. The word of the Lord, verse 1, Hosea 1.1. 1, 1. The word of the Lord that came unto Hosea, the son of Beri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. See, Judah and Israel had different kings. How can they be the same people? Only in the minds of deceived or deceiving pastors. Read, read it again. Don't have me read it to you. Don't trust me. You know, king of Israel, kings of Judah. Verse 2. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, and the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredoms, departing from the Lord. See, the Lord's comparing Hosea to himself. You know, the bride, the bride of Christ. But he's saying, go take a, a bride of whoredoms, because that's like my bride. My children Israel, they're like, they're whores. A wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblam, which conceived and bare him a son. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel, for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and will cause to cease, and will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. The kingdom of Israel is going to cease to exist. The kingdom. Boy, you don't hear this stuff taught in church, do you? Verse 5. And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she conceived again and bare a daughter, and God said unto her, uh, unto him, Call her name Loruhama, for I will no more for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. I'm going to take them away. I'm going to kick them out of here. Verse 7. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, and will save them by the Lord their God, and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses nor by horsemen. God's not going to have mercy on Israel, but he's going to have mercy on Judah. They're not the same. Now when she had leaned, weaned, Lord Yuhama, she conceived and bare a son. Then said God, Call his name Luami, for ye are not my people. 
ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. God divorced Israel. Remember that. Jeremiah 3, 8. Verse 10, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. Are the Jews like the sand of the sea? No. Well, maybe the Jews are not Israel. Maybe they're not even Judah. Maybe they're deceivers. Yet the children of Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place, Jerusalem, that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, ye are not my people. You're not my people anymore. In the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. Why? Jeremiah 31, 31, the new covenant. Ye are the sons of the living God. Who is the living God? Jesus, who was crucified, died in the flesh, and three days was resurrected and is sitting on the right hand of the throne next to God. Ye are the sons of the living God. Verse 11, Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, Christ, and they shall come up, up, out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. There you go. Now remember, God divorced Israel, and he said he would give them a new covenant. So let's read Hosea chapter 2, verse 21. And it shall come to pass in that day, I will hear, saith the Lord, I will hear the heavens, and they shall hear the earth, and the earth shall hear the corn, and the wine, and the oil, and they shall hear Jezreel. And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her, who, the bride of Christ, Israel, his people, his bride, and I will have mercy upon her, that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them which were not my people, and I will say to them which were not my people, Thou art my people, you are my people. And they shall say, Thou art my God. Is there a New Testament witness? Yes! Yes, there is! Romans 9.25, and they'll tell you, oh, this is for the Jews. As he saith also in O.C. What is O.C.? It's the Greek rendering of the word of, of, of the name Hosea, the book Hosea, the, the prophet. As he saith also in O.C., I will call them my people, which were not my people. Why were they not his people? God divorced them. Jeremiah 3.8 I will call them my people which were not my people and her beloved which was not beloved. Wow! How about 1 Peter 2 verse 10 which in time past were not a people but are now the people of God which had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy. Let's read 1 Peter chapter 2 and we'll close this out. Verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. And how can you do that if you've never read the Bible? The whole thing. It starts in Genesis, people. Matthew does is not the beginning of the Bible. Verse 3, If so be ye, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone. Who is the living stone? Christ. Disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. 
And yeah, you better believe the blood of Christ is precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. And if you don't think the stone or the rock is Christ, 1 Corinthians 10, 4. And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. Now, this is talking about Exodus, people. You never read Exodus? Well, duh. People tell me, oh, I, I read the book of Revelation. I don't understand it. Well, of course not. All the symbolism comes from the Old Testament. You've never bothered to read it. Why would you understand it? You think you're going to read a, a, a mystery novel and read the last chapter and you think you understand the book? No. Well, that's what sort of kind of similar to what the Bible is. And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Peter's not the rock Christ was. All right. Uh, 1 Peter 2 and verse 5. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices accepted to God by Jesus Christ. Um, well, let's read verse 4. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief corner stone, elect, precious. Remember, Christ is that cornerstone of the church. And he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Verse 9, listen in carefully. Listen carefully. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people. Why were they not a people? They were divorced. Jeremiah 3.8, Hosea chapter 1. They were, not their, they were not God's people. They were divorced. They were cast off which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. And there you got it, people. There you got it. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.